Young Davidson Mine is back again. It's back in the community. It is employing people again. It is providing income. It's providing expansion and growth for the town of Metatchewan. Metatchewan means the meeting of the waters. And our slogan here in Metatchewan is, where the highway ends, the adventure begins. I don't think I could find the adequate words to say how Rico has affected the town because they have done more for the town in a short time than any other company has ever done. Arica Gold is a, is a Canadian gold producing company. Um, they acquired the property in October of uh, 2011. The Young Davison Mine means an awful lot to the people of Metachon and even the so surrounding areas. We've had tremendous community support uh, through all of the neighboring communities uh, as well as the First Nation communities. And we are just so pleased with them and they've become part of the Metatuan family. My name is Tony Killingsworth, and I'm the grandson of Jacob Alexander Davidson, known in the mining circles as Jake, who was born in Bronte, Ontario in the year 1871. Jake, as a youngster, was a very interested young lad in rocks and stones, right from the get-go, as they say. I think he was about 19 years of age when he apparently started doing his prospecting. He went generally across the northern terrains of Ontario. He had staked a number of small claims, but he did eventually settle into the Kirkland Lake Metachewan area, where he really started to work with his passion of finding gold. For Jake Davidson being a prospector in the early 1900s, I guess one of the most difficult challenges they would have had would have been access into these remote areas. He worked with the First Nations people to the extent that they were truly his friends, and I guess I would say like a family. Many, many references of how they helped him travel, how they used their pack horses, how they helped him build canoes, they helped him significantly storing his winter supplies. Uh, there's many writings that I possess that tell of the stories, tell of the, the supplies he took with him. He slept in a cave when he got to the mine area of the Young Davidson. There was a, a natural formed cave. Jake's cave is a, is a legend, I guess, in these parts, which refers to an area not too far from the mine site here. When he found something that he thought would carry gold is where his little backpack consisting of picks and hammers, and they would laboriously knock pieces of rock away, expose chunks, put them in the little sacks that he has, bring them back to Toronto in the wintertime, take them down to the university, take them to the assayer's office, and uh, that's how he would determine what the value might be in the ore. Like everything else, when they staked the claim, he did not have the financial resources to develop it. So at that point, he connected with Weldy Young. My name is Linda Young and I'm the great-granddaughter of Weldon Champness Young, otherwise known as Weldy. Weldon Young started out as a hockey player in Ottawa. He played for the original Ottawa Senators. He was born in 1871 and through the late uh, 1880s and 90s he played for the Ottawa Hockey Club. In about 1901 he moved out to Dawson City in the Yukon to pan for gold. And in 1916, he co-founded the mine, the Young Davidson Mine in Metashawan with Jake Davidson. Just because you find gold, as the stories go, you need the money to be able to develop it. And that's where the partnership came from. It involved the neighborhood and really brought it to life. It was a small, small little hamlet community I believe in its heyday, there was up to four to 5,000 people there. The town of Metachewan was a thriving little community. They had their taxi stand, a bus station. I think there was two or three hotels. They had a theater, they had their grocery stores, clothing stores. And this was all due to having the mine out here. I'm Joan Welch Atkins. I'm originally was raised and born in Metachewan. 
and my parents had a business there of the bus business and uh, daily we would take all the miners back and forth to the mine. They worked three shifts a day and you didn't have seven days on, seven days off. You actually practically worked every day because that was your livelihood. Well, in the early uh, 1930s or in the early years of mining, uh, workers would have been exposed to a high risk of unknown. Uh, at that time, um, little or no safety procedures or practices in place. Uh, therefore, miners would go in there with little or no training. They didn't have the real high-class equipment like you have today in that. Poor ventilation practices, uh, hot, humid areas, poor lighting, cramped areas with little or no ground support. And uh, the old timers worked very hard. You can imagine the work it took to, to do all that timber work, to do all that shoots. Um, much more dangerous back then. You were actually in the stove. It carried on for a number of years until the cost of gold dropped to the point where the low-grade ore that they were producing didn't produce enough revenue to maintain the mine production. In 1952, or late 51, I had the opportunity of visiting the mine, and we saw the mine as it was closed at the moment. It looked to me like at four o'clock one afternoon, a whistle blew, the mine gates were locked, and they abandoned the property. Now that Orico is back in, the excitement, I believe, is coming to life. When I was even making a hotel reservation, I could feel the enthusiasm in the hotel manager's voice saying that, oh yes, everybody's coming to Matachamon. We're back on the map. We've been able to develop, uh, initially with the Matachamon First Nation community, a, a MATS uh, program. MATS stands for Matachamon Aboriginal Access to Mining Job Strategy. And it was uh, the goal of the program was to train uh, Matachuan First Nation members to become miners. I'm the first female underground miner here at Young Davidson Mine. I, I took the MATS program. It led me to my career that I have today. I love my job because it's a great challenge, it's rewarding. Orico Gold is a great company to work for. I am very excited about the new recruits and the opportunities here provided to the young workers of Matachuan and the area. Uh, it is an exciting time for them and uh, we will train them appropriately to ensure their safety. Currently, our RICO employees, we have about 185. Our full workforce at full complement, once we get to the full underground mining rates, will be in the neighborhood of about 300 RICO employees full time. One of the key differences between Jake's day and our day and why there's so many more geologists here now is that uh, Back in the early years, they would mine only a few hundred tons a day, whereas we're looking to mine anywhere between six and 8,000 tons per day. And we're really modeling the future mining based on uh, their old uh, mining, but with using the modern technology. Even uh, three-dimensional modeling software was a tool that they didn't have before. The skill they needed to employ was doing it by hand on paper. What we have here is all the 3D modeling done in the mine. Here with this software, we can actually play through the actual mine life, and you can see the visualization along with the dates and what we are planning on doing. Well, I'm very excited with the future of Arico Gold. I think, you know, we're well positioned. We obviously see at this point we've got a 15 year plus mine life. We've got about a two and a half year open pit. And uh, you know, we, we look at being in, in this region, in this sector for, for many years to come. I think Jake Davidson is an inspiration to a lot of prospectors, to a lot of geologists. Um, certainly it, uh, it's phenomenal what he was able to achieve. Gold was what he wanted. Gold is what they found together with Weldy. Gold is what they produced, and it's gold again. They're back in business, the mine is thriving, the people are being employed, the town is excited, and that's where the young Davidson is today, full circle. I'm so proud of what my great-grandfather achieved, and to know that almost 100 years later, Orico has restarted production in the mine. It's part of my heritage, and I am so proud. 
You can't ask for a better company to come into your town. They've been awesome with us. With me, it's no handshake. I get a hug every time they come up. They're just awesome. They, as I said, I can't find words to express my, my feelings for them.